Hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. What's up? What's up? Yeah. So uh, Bitcoin's, it, the ETF expanded to five more big corporations, including Gary Ginsler's favorite, Goldman Sachs. And uh, DeFi is rapidly booming right now. That's what we have. Bitcoin is at 67,005. Looks like we're not getting to 70K this week. The Fed's uh, speech really has uh, toned things down quite a bit, and uh, people are fearful. That's no surprise. People are very, very fearful of uh, not having interest rate cuts, although I don't really think they should be, but they are, unfortunately. And that's just how uh, things work out today. So that's what we're going to talk about. It is Friday. It is indeed Friday, which means things are awesome. I changed my channel name for our branding purposes because when people search for crypto news, they can't actually find my channel. But if they search for uh, Crypto Angler, they can definitely find my channel. What would you say the peak of the bull run? I still think it's going to be next year. I think in the second half of this year, you're going to see like the fun start coming in and it's going to culminate next year. I don't think it's going to quite culminate this year. I think this year is mainly just like this year is just going to get everything ready. And then like next year, it's probably going to like, I think next year is most likely when it's going to climax. It could climax late this year. I don't really know. I think it's going to take, I really do think it's going to take until June or July for like everyone to truly come in. Like it's going to take until June or July for everyone to truly like start coming in. So yeah, I mean, not really, um, I'm not really that much in like a hurry or anything um, for it to culminate. I, I'm just going to enjoy this bull run for what it is and as things go along. So let's actually talk about the black rockiness of BlackRock. And uh, they've actually added five big new firms to their funds. So the ETF is expanding and um, that could definitely bring in way more money. Hopefully Costco hot dog will go to the moon. Because I have some Costco hot dog, but let's actually look at the BlackRock ETF news first. Uh, this is the article with the news. And uh, yeah, here we go. So, BlackRock updates Bitcoin ETF adds five Wall Street firms. BlackRock's new additions include ABN AMRO, Citadel Securities, Citigroup Global Markets, Goldman Sachs, and UBS Securities. Global Asset Manager BlackRock uh, updated B ETF prospectus on April 5th. So it's an update to the prospectus, adding five big Wall Street firms as new authorized participants so these guys can participate in the Bitcoin ETF. So the new members include AMB Ambro Rearing, Citadel Securities, Citigroup Global Markets, Goldman Sachs, and UBS. Now, out of the five, I know four of them. I don't really, I've never heard of ABN, ABN, AMRO Clearing. The others, Citadel, Citigroup, Goldman, and UBS, obviously I've heard of. They're pretty well known. And um, according to a document amending BlackRock's S-1 registration statement with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, among the previously authorized participants in the ETF are J.P. Morgan Securities, Jane Street Capital, Mercury Capital and Virtu Americas. Authorized participants play a crucial role in the BTC ETF operational mechanism as they can create and redeem shares of the ETF, which involves, they can act as middlemen, basically. So five more companies are invested or involved in BlackRock IBIT. Balchunas just in BlackRock updated this its Bitcoin ETF prospectus with many new authorized participants, including first-timers Citadel, Goldman Sachs, UBS, Citigroup, Takeaway, big time firms now want a piece of the action and or now okay being publicly associated with this. So essentially like these big firms like Goldman, Citadel, UBS, they're going to be okay with publicly associated with Bitcoin, which means they're going to be more pro crypto in the future. They're not going to be so anti crypto. So the, a lot, the crypto alliance is getting stronger and stronger. Very bad news for Elizabeth Warren and Gary Ginsler. So uh, the SEC's position on a cash creation and redemption mechanism for Bitcoin ETFs was primarily directed at mitigating market manipulation risks associated with transactions. The cash mechanism entails that new shares of Bitcoin ETF will only be created or redeemed through cash transactions, but that also means that you have to buy and sell them 
In contrast to the traditional in-kind model where market participants handle the underlying direct uh, assets directly, I think there's actually less likely like huge pumps and dumps if they allow in-kind. So this is, uh, you know, BlackRock is trying to change all of this. If you look at the, um, I mean, this is just the Bitcoin inflow outflow chart since the beginning. And you can see most of the days are inflows, but we've definitely had some down days for outflows. This was the week where we dumped to 38,000. This was the week where we dumped, dumped to 60K. And the rest of in between are kind of like positive. Um, the last few days of March are positive as well. Uh, the April 1st, which was Monday, was negative. But we don't really have, I don't have the data for the rest of that yet. It seems like the rest of the week was probably pretty even. And hopefully next week we can start going up as these inflows become positive again. Because all the price action on Bitcoin completely depends on these inflows and outflows right now. So at this point, we're just waiting around to see what happens. Um, but the ETF is expanding. There's more, like there's five more big investment companies that are interested in Bitcoin and the ETF again. And the pro crypto alliance is growing because once they have their hands dipped in this, they're not going to want regulations that thwart crypto. And once they see how much money they can make from this, they'll definitely want other crypto ETFs. So the big financial powers are starting to make their stance and the big financial powers, their stance is very much pro crypto. So yes, that's what we're seeing, right? That's really what we're seeing right now. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. I think we're going to see some really good things coming in the future. Definitely going to see some really good things coming in the future. So very, very cool. Very, very cool. DeFi has also bloomed lately uh, because of um, as more and more people are getting involved in the DeFi market. So this is, uh, this is that. So DeFi blooms as daily active wallets hit 7 million. Van Eck bullish on Ethereum Layer 2's finance redefined. Market analysts predict Layer 2 blockchains are set to capitalize on Ethereum's primary challenge to process, store, and compute, uh, co uh, compute data. So like they're, pre they're predicting that a lot of the Ethereum stuff is going to go into Layer 2. I think some of it is going to go into Layer 2, but some of it's also going to go into other chains. So essentially, welcome to finance redefined, blah, 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 whatever. The surge in uh, DeFi in recent months saw centralized application DAP activity, I mean decentralized, sorry, application DAP activity increased by 77% in the fourth quarter of 2023 with total daily active user wallet count of 7 million. The European Commission is evaluating the DeFi industry and could require protocols to obtain a license in the near future. We talked about that yesterday. That could definitely hamper DeFi in Europe as only downloadable apps would actually let you access DeFi and like browser-based uh, websites might not let you uh, access DeFi. According to analysts from investor manager Venek, Lair Ethereum Layer 2 scaling networks could hit 1 trillion market capitalization in the next six years. So they're talking about like Arbitrum, um, they're talking about Arbitrum, Polygon, uh, Optimism, plus others. So they're saying like Ethereum Layer 2 networks could hit 1 trillion in three years. Um, the top the top 100 DeFi tokens had a bearish week, but um, the active unique wallets reached 7 million on DAP Radar, and that's like bigger than before. The latest report from DAP Radar highlights several bullish indicators in the DAP and Web3 sectors for the first quarter of 2024. DAP saw a quarter over quarter usage increase of 77%. That's obviously because the uh, obviously because the market turned more bullish again. And with a da total daily active user wallet count of 7 million, this shows an increase of approximately 40% since February. So obviously more and more people are getting into DeFi. I don't think we've reached critical mass on DeFi yet, but I do think we're quickly approaching. And when we uh, get to that breaking point, I think DeFi is going to have a big surge. Now, obviously it's not s spread um, evenly on all the chains. Solana and Ethereum Layer 2 is benefiting a lot uh, from this kind of like DeFi surge right now. Not really so sure about the other chains. Like it's basically Solana Layer 2, maybe AVAX, maybe BNB, but the others aren't. Maybe because of lack of liquidity, maybe because of other things. So DeFi is expanding. We have some um, some fear from Europe 
uh, that Europe could ban non-decentralized protocols or even non-decentralized front ends. It's not really the non-decentralized protocols that I'm afraid of them banning. It's the non-decentralized front ends that I'm actually afraid of them banning because that actually could block a lot of our access to DeFi. So we got to be watching that one very, very carefully. So yes. So there are like, so Ethereum layer twos, according to their report, should actually be a very good investment for both this bull run and next bull run. If Ethereum layer twos could reach $1 trillion, that's a huge multiplier from where they are right now. If you look at the big Ethereum layer twos, you got Arbitrum, that's only 8.49 billion, Polygon, 8.8 billion, uh, and Optimism's like what, like 3 billion or something? Like, yeah, 2.9 billion. That's like barely over, that's like, you know, 11, 12 billion dollars almost 100x to 1 trillion if they get it by 2030. And obviously, if you get 100x by 2030, you're doing pretty well in terms of ROI. So essentially, uh, essentially that's what you're looking at for Ethereum Layer 2s, maybe massive growth. I think there's going to be a lot of money that filter into other chains too. I, also, I don't think it's just going to be Ethereum. I definitely think there's going to be a lot of other chains that benefit. But maybe like layer two will be the main thing because there is going to be a lot of money filtering in from Ethereum because Ethereum layer one is unusable and people are going to have to go to layer two. There's going to have to be liquidity interoperability in layer two though uh, because without that, like you can't really bridge between the layer twos, but there are many projects working on that. So that's what we have for, that's actually what we have for DeFi right now. Like the, the Ethereum layer twos, looks like they're going to go up. Uh, did Solana go down today? I don't think so, but Solana's been having a lot of dropped uh, transactions, unfortunately. Um, Solana has been having a lot of drop transactions recently, and that's because, and I think most of the drop transactions are basically arbitrage bots because they're like spamming the, they're relentlessly spamming the network. And as I show, as I showed um, yesterday, as I've shown like yesterday. Uh, my phantom wallet transactions were not drop, uh, have not dropped. It's, I think it is mainly arbitrage bots, but they do need to fix the problem right now. It's seeing like they're, it's saying right now, Solana is experiencing network congestion and it is from all the arbitrage. It is actually from all the arbitrage bots. Uh, it is actually from the arbitrage bots. Um, uh, like basically like doing tens of like doing like hundreds of transactions every second to micro arbitrage the meme coins. I think Solana should just give up the we we uh, process a whole bunch of transactions thing. And just go with the yeah, let's get our network underway thing. And like, I think the way they, they fix this, pro I actually think the way they fix this problem is to basically implement like a five or 10 cent fee for transactions because that would actually knock out most of the arbitrage bots because then it makes it unprofitable for them to do micro arbitrage. See, like you can't really get rid of, you really can't get rid of micro arbitrage until you kill the bots. And the way to kill the bots is to make them not profitable. I can't get my Solana off MXC withdrawal suspended due to on-chain maintenance. On-chain maintenance right now is because of network congestion are saying Solana is broken. I mean, it's 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 sort of broken. It's not entirely broken right now, but there's a lot of network congestion because there's so much micro arbitrage. They might add, di no, they should just add a flat fee. Add a flat fee of like 10 cents. That would, like, if you add a flat fee of 10 cents, I, I think that would kill the, like that would actually kill the micro arbitrage. I think if you add a fee of like, if you add a fee of 10 cents, that would kill a lot of the micro arbitrage. They just need to make it, I think they just need to make it like unprofitable for them to like do hundreds of transactions per minute or per sec or like per second. Because if you even add a fee of like 10 or 20 cents, it'll cost a lot of money to do this micro, like constantly do like spam transactions for micro arbitrage. Once you have any kind of significant fee, it makes it impossible to micro arbitrage. Look at Ethereum. No one micro arbitrages on Ethereum. Yes. Costco hot dog. I mean, but a Costco hot dog is not broken 300 yet. My bag of Costco hot dog. By the way, is my bag, my Solana bag is pretty much all donations. So I've never actually bought any of this. Someone needs to go, someone needs to go and seriously pump Kentucky fried cat. I don't even know what the hell that is. But yeah, I've gotten like donations of uh, like my Solana bag is nearly $600. 
Solana will not be around as a top 10 within the next five or 10 years. You know, Destruction X, I actually think you're wrong about that. I think even if they have these issues, it'll still be around top 10 because they'll resolve some of these issues and they'll keep going on. Remember, remember how many times Solana actually went down last time? It went down like six or seven times and yet it still ended up being the most uh, popular chain. I think retail adoption, I think retail adoption on Solana is it, it uh, is like number one right now the, the thing is like solana's fast and cheap and uh once they solve and right now even though it's not fast right now it's still pretty cheap think wormhole goodbye i would wait a week or two to buy wormhole because i'm not really sure if it's done dumping yet because yeah like congestion on solana just means there's a lot of transactions they need to fix they do actually need to fix the issue though um, and like I said, like this, the fees, I, I think just switching up like 10 or 20 cent fees can fix the issue. Cause like, if you, if you have seen, if you have like those kind of fees, then micro arbitraging will be impossible. You already killed, you kind of killed the DDoS attacks. Uh, you killed the DDoS attacks by implementing a very, very small fee. Now you just need to implement a slightly bigger one to kill micro arbitrage. Yeah. You won't be able to brag that your chain has like a, a huge amount of fees, but you know, that doesn't really matter. That just like, that just bragging rights. Who cares, right? As long as the chain's working right. So yeah. And, and it is it is actually the meme coins that's causing this. Because like the, the micro arbitrage bots are going like crazy trying to arbitrage on the meme coins. And they're just doing like mini trades. How you can't transfer crypto at a given time due to maintenance and the network being too congested all the time. It's not all the time. It's really like today. I mean, my, my transaction worked fine yesterday. It's essentially like the last couple of hours. Yeah, I mean, look, it's problematic. But Dest Destruction X, here's the thing. Look at Ethereum. It's basically like this all the time. Like, Ethereum is actually like this all the time. And it's still number two. And it's been number two for a long time. Like, despite, like, this congestion, it's probably still faster than Ethereum. Despite the network being congested, it's probably still faster than Ethereum. Because Ethereum takes, what, like 20 minutes for a transaction? And it's also, like, very expensive. So, like, just looking at Ethereum, yeah, like, Solana can actually maintain this for quite a while. Even if it is congested. I think they'll fix the congestion issue pretty soon. I, look, I really think they just need to implement, like, a 10-cent fee so the bots will stop, like, a 10 or 20-cent fee so the, the bots stop micro-arbitraging. Like, once the bots stop micro-arbitraging, Solana's problems will be solved. Because like right now, like for every every transaction that an actual human does, bots do like a thousand of them, essentially. Because they're just doing like very short term trades to get that like 0.1% profit. But as soon as you make that, as soon as you actually make that unavailable, they won't be able to do that anymore. It is garbage. I mean, that's what it is. They're trying to get like very, very, like they're basically trying to get very, very small profits trading in and out of the meme coins. I don't really know if that'll hurt meme coin mania or not. I don't think so. I really don't think so because base meme coins, I think, do fine without that. And other meme coins have soared up even without the micro arbitrage because they're just trying to sell at very small and very, like, very, very small increments. So I don't really know what's, I really don't know what's going on with Ton. Like, Ton's been soaring up, but I don't really know why Ton would actually be doing so well. I mean, has Telegram suddenly exploded or something? I, I don't think so, right? I don't really know why Ton is like coming up in market cap so much. That's why it's never good to value a chain based on transactions. They don't know how it will handle it. Best onboarding for base coins. You probably buy, in a, buy a coin off Coinbase that actually is on base and then you just trade for other base coins. I, f I would feel like that's the best way or buy one on Kraken. But since it's Coinbase's base chain, I'm going to guess Coinbase has more listings for coins on base. Because once you have a coin on the chain, you can swap for anything else. So I'll have different issues though. Cryptos will continue improving without these problems. Yeah, but you know the thing is like TPS, you're always going to have these problems. I think you're always going to have these problems once it gets above a certain amount. I mean like if you have all these bots doing hundreds of transactions per second, you have like thousands of them, you're always going to have issues. <clears throat> They're shorting uh, with futures. Uh, yeah, I mean they've been sh they've been shorting BTC like that for a long time. I mean I think they're gonna be able to short the ETF sooner or later. I think like starting next year, maybe that's why it'll crest next year. Uh, I got that. Yeah. 
They start, uh, both Sol and Ethereum have, uh, yeah. I mean, people keep on thinking that Ethereum's going to go down, but Ethereum's maintained despite its issues. And Ethereum's issues are much more serious than Solana's uh, when it comes to like scaling. Because I, I think they can just, I think they can solve the Solana issue just by implementing a small fee. They can't solve the Ethereum issue just by implementing a small fee. It, it's just slow. Is the year? Oh, is this the year for? V I mean, I hope it is. I I don't really know though. I really don't know. Looks like Charles is freaking out because Grayscale threw ADA out of the fund. Adam also got removed. So Cardano and Adam got removed from the fund. Cardano was removed from the crypto asset manager Grayscale Investment Digital Large Cap Fund after rebalancing its funds based on their Q1 review. Based on Coinbase trajectory sector indices, the review also saw Cosmos leading the crypto asset fund smart contract platform. Um, so Cardano's price plunged 3.2%. Uh, I think it's pretty much gained back now at this point. Um, after Grayscale Investment announced in a press release on April 4th that it sold its holdings of ADA in the GDLC portfolio and used the cash uh, proceeds to buy existing components of the funds in proportion, in proportion to their respective weightings. So the, what they have right now is BTC, Ethereum, Solana, XRP, Avalanche uh, with basically 75. So they have 70% Ethereum, 20, uh, 70% Bitcoin, 21% Ethereum, 4.52% Solana, 1.73 XRP, and 0.95 AVAX. So yeah, it, like they did, some re, they did some rebalancing, I suppose. And I think it's just like what their perspectives on the funds are. Is selling BTC too like they're selling their coins? I mean, they they actually, I think they I think they actually sold their uh, I think they sold their Cardano for Solana though. I think like they sold their Cardano for Solana because Solana actually went up to like four point five two. That's like their third biggest holding now. It's the third biggest one by quite a lot. Has been making terrible decisions lately. There's just another. Prob it's probably because of the low trading volume. If you look at like the volume on Live Coin Watch, all the others have like a couple billion in trading volume. And, and when you get down to it, but AVAX also doesn't have a huge amount of trading volume. Like AVAX might be the next one to be cut. They just want the ones with large trading volume. I hear they're saying that fetch AGIX ocean merge is maybe a money grab. It could be a money grab for the companies. I don't think it's actually that beneficial to the coin holders, but it could definitely be a money grab for the companies. Yes, Charles is going to get like Charles is going to get salty because of that. I mean, Charles gets salty because of anything, but Charles needs to realize Charles also needs to realize that he's also the reason for a lot of this that a lot of the stuff is happening. Bear market with no one even using an adventure cap. I mean, you can say that, but essentially, like Solana is essentially like congested because there's too many transactions on it. But it'll keep being used, because like despite being congested, it's still better than Ethereum. And unless someone like I can see, I can see people moving to BNB or AVAX maybe from this. Like that, I can see people moving from BNB and A to to BNB or AVAX from some of this, or maybe to other L twos. But most of these blockchains would have the exact same problem. Here's a, is this the beginning of the end for Cardano? I don't, I don't think so. Look, I don't really think like, I really don't think like Grayscale's actions uh, should be read too deeply into. 
They're just rebalancing with the coins that actually have a lot of volume. FTX to uh, worth of Solana. That happened a long time ago. Um, FTX basically had to dump everything and they did hold a lot of Solana. Think Solana survives? Yes, I think Solana will survive the next bear market. Like Solana is still like the preferred chain for retail at this point. And retail is what pumps price of like basically anything that's not Bitcoin. Buying alts with the profits? Yeah, I think mostly Grayscale bought Solana with what they sold in Cardano. Well, yeah, but XRP has better has always had better trading volume than ADA because like one of the advantages of XRP is it's that is that it's actually listed across a lot of exchanges, so it's always had a lot of volume. It's only recently that BNB Solana has actually surpassed XRP in terms of volume. I mean, like Solana has the volume Solana has the volume because of the meme coins and the projects coming out of the chain. Yes, FTX basically had to dump everything. FTX owes a lot of people money, so they had to dump everything. It's like they dump pretty, they had to dump all their crypto assets. That's why Bitcoin went down so furiously right after the ETF because they like literally had to dump all their Bitcoin. I don't have any thoughts on Zeus Network because I haven't really looked at it or kept up with it. Kronos, I mean, Kronos has to do some marketing. Right now, people are still using SOL. I mean... The last like day or two, Solana has been having some issues, especially like today. But, like I said, I, I think I think they can actually get rid of these issues. I definitely think they can just get rid of these issues. Um, if they just uh, if they just increase the fees on the chain to like ten cents. Like look, XRP for a lot for the longest time had more trading pairs than other coins. That's why, like, during the bear market and, like, during previous bull markets, it had more volume because it had more trading pairs. Garlinghouse & Co. actually spent a lot of effort to get, XRP, to get XRP listed across a ton of exchanges. Look, if you can just look for... You can look for other chains. You can go for, like, Near or some other chain. There's plenty of layer ones out there to choose from. I mean, look, the, the Grayscale Large Cap Fund, like ni over 90% of it is Bitcoin and Ethereum. The others are just like really small amounts. Like the like half of the half of the remaining is basically Solana. Because like Bitcoin and Ethereum make up like 96% of the Grayscale Fund. Solana makes up another 4.5. XRP is like one point something. And then like AVAX is 0.93. My guess is the next one they're going to dump would probably be AVAX. Because like it doesn't have enough volume. It's the strongest chain. Why is Ethereum the strongest chain? Like Ethereum is like in like Ethereum still like Ethereum still works works worse than Solana, despite the fact that Solana is congested. No, I wouldn't trade ADA for BCH. I, I wouldn't trade anything for BCH. I also wouldn't I also wouldn't be freaking out just because Grayscale dumped Cardano. Look, people in crypto need to not learn to like freak out just because like one thing happened. Also, like, also just because Grayscale sold something doesn't mean that coin's dead. I mean, Grayscale still has stacks of like ETC. The fees are so high they uh, don't have any crashing problems. Hidden gift, exactly. Well. I mean, the fees are so high that it makes like micro arbitrage pretty much impossible. Like there, there are there are very few micro arbitrage bots. I don't think there are any micro arbitrage bots on Ethereum because it's you can't do micro arbitrage bots on Ethereum. It just costs too much. Look, if you like, you can try buying some of the newer coins like Near or INJ, but I think all these coins are going to go up when Bitcoin starts going up. Amount of emotions I see in the chat or buy more Cardano. I don't know if I would like splurge more into Cardano at this point. I mean, I think you need to be diversified. I already have a big enough bag of Cardano and Cardano uh, coins. Charles does actually need to realize though that he's the reason that a lot of this is happening. Because like his stubbornness and his like insane idealism and the fact that he hasn't realized he's not really that smart. 
He's like, like Charles is one of those classic fake it until you make it guys. And uh, it doesn't always work. And right now you're seeing the effects of it not working. And yeah, like it's the volume on Cardano, but you'd have more volume on Cardano if you just got USDC. This is why he should stop trying to like cock block it and just give USDC what they want to come on to Cardano. Because right now, like the lack of volume is going to turn away a lot of people. And there's, and like the lack of volume, and like the lack of volume is kind of being caused by him at this point. Because he's stubborn and he's like too idealistic. Or he wants to do something and the market's saying no. It's quite bullish how Cardano doesn't have the USD and still it's, uh, I mean, it is kind of bullish on that extent, but it's going to be hard for it to grow though. It's really going to be hard for it to grow. Yeah, the whole like putting out more political. I look. I mean, like some some of his followers really believe that because I think there's like a, a small cult. I think there is a small cult of, a cult of personality around Charles where people like just eat that stuff up. But for the investors, we don't really care about that. I I don't know if CRO is really going anywhere either. I thought CRO would benefit a lot because of the Binance fallout, but it really hasn't. It's really been OKX that's actually benefited from the Binance fallout. Yeah, but the question of like, it will eventually adopt USDC. The question has got to be, when is it eventually going to adopt USDC? I mean, people want to know like, you know, what's going to happen to their investments. Like, when is it going to adopt USDC? And like, you know, like, is it going to be in, in time for the bull run? Because I don't want to be waiting another four years for this. Uh, I mean, Beebs, like the fair launch thing is cool, but it also means the treasury has no money to develop. The treasury doesn't really have in money, the money to provide incentives and stuff. So there's like two sides of that. Also, Caspa still needs smart contracts. I still have a bag of Caspa, but I really, really want to get smart contracts. Probably adopt it soon for a bull run. They need to. Look, look CS, CA, I am not interested in CH's personal life or his personal philosophies or his political leanings. I could care less about any of that stuff. Like the, Cardano, like the Cardano stuff and how it develops, that's what I care about. Yeah, they, they got to adopt it within this year if they want to catch the bull run. Because investors don't want to wait another four years for him to adopt USDC. He's basic, like he's just being stubborn. Like, you know, I, I know he said he doesn't like pay to play, but like, but the benefits you get from adopting a large stable coin are gonna completely outweigh what you have to pay for it. And like USDC spent like years building, uh, building uh, their stable coin up. You're not gonna be able to match it with USDM within like a couple of months. Uh, won't dump on you. I believe smart contracts are on the way. Yeah, the I mean VC's not dumping on you is fine. Um, smart contracts, you know, the thing is like they, they just have to get them. I don't know when it's coming. Like they have to be coming within a year. Because if they're not here like by this time next year, then like, you know, you gotta wait for another four years. What uh, happened about the poll uh, about the poll a couple of years ago? Uh, updates? What do you mean poll? I mean I changed my channel name mainly because of branding. It's true. Cadena now has smart contracts. I think Cadena does. I'm Caspa doesn't yet, but I think Cadena does. It's one of those coins that will make Sol look obsolete soon. I, you know, I really wouldn't mind that. I have a bag of I have a bag of Caspa. If it makes if it actually makes um, Solana obsolete obsolete soon, that's okay. The other thing is Caspa needs something besides a web wallet. Like there isn't a multi wallet. I, I don't. I haven't found a multi wallet that supports Caspa yet. So all of, all my Caspa still in the web wallet. Something about a poll on Bitcoin. Um, I don't remember if there's any poll on. I mean, I, I know the halving's coming very soon. I don't remember any kind of poll on Bitcoin. I still think Solana is going to reach like five hundred to a thousand dollars. Obviously, it's down today because it's having issues right now. So with all the 80, uh, this bull run, a dollar. Look, I don't, I haven't changed my predictions for 88 during this bull run. I think it will do fine, but Charles needs to, like Charles really needs to get over himself. Like he, he needs to realize that he's the reason why a lot of this stuff is actually happening right now. Like 
you know, the, the difference between like how well Solana is doing and how well Cardano is doing is because Solana, like the Solana, the people in charge of Solana are managing it way better than him. Thanks, man. Thanks, the nation. Uh, I've already said, I think Solana will be between, will be between $500 and $1,000 this bull run. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm definitely going to stick with that prediction. I don't think it's going to go above a K, but 500 to a K is definitely possible. First time uh, I've... Yeah, like Cardano is like five to ten dollars at a conference. Caspa is all, is on one key hardware wallet. Yeah, but I I mean I mean like a, an actual like multi web wallet like uh you know like uh, either Exodus or Phantom or MetaMask or one of those, you, or like like uh, some kind of browser extension wallet. There's a lot of infrastructure that Caspa doesn't actually have right now that they need to build. So like. In terms of development, they're quite a bit behind all the other chains. They're kind of new, obviously, but they're quite a bit behind all these other chains. They've ridden up this high because of hype, but there's not much to back that hype right now. And at, at this point, like you're like Casper's at the stage where it's actually a big enough project where it needs like stuff to back up the hype. Well, no, like like Casper needs a like what Casper really needs. Well, I mean, I guess Casper doesn't really have like DeFi yet, so they don't really need a Dex wallet. But they need like kind of a framework of a DEX wallet to build off of in the future. Because they do like, they eventually need smart contracts. They need a DEX. They need AMM pools and all that other stuff. Wasn't it only like 4.8 though? Do uh, you think Caspo will be on Binance, CRO, or Coinbase this year? It might. I mean, I think Binance is probably the biggest chance. And it'll probably get a pump if it gets onto Binance. Dude, I could care less about Charles' sexual orientation, and I'd highly doubt that, just by some of the pictures he's taken with hot women. KAS isn't flipping... No, no, uh, KAS is not going... Like, Casper's not flipping Soul anytime soon. I don't actually think Soul will, like, suffer too many shocks from this. I think they're, they're going to fix the problem pretty quickly, and once they do, like, I think things will go back to normal. Because, like, it's not that hard to fix the Solana problem. Just implement, like, a 10-cent fee. Like, if you implement, a, like, if you implement a 10 or 20-cent fee, that'll kill all the micro-arbitrage. You can't just ban bots. But you can make, like, like those bots unprofitable. You just, all you have to do is really take away the economic incentive for those bots to trade, like, 100 trades per second. And then, like, you're fine. Because, like, there are a lot of people using those arbitrage bots. Hoping to get small, uh, s small profits. Well, yeah, that's because Mew pumped up like 400% beforehand. Some token called Eclipse or Solar Pump. I'm sure though someone will make one. Is there a rumor about Corporation? Yeah, I heard about that. Like, uh, like Starlink as well. I don't know if I believe that rumor, but it's really good for WMT if that rumor is true. For what DeFi wants and needs, we're not talking about, yeah. Like soul is not being used for corporate enterprise. So if it lags, if it la if it bogs down every once in a while, or it shuts uh, or, or, or like crashes like every once couple of months, people really aren't going to care that much. Like Solana is ru not running critical infrastructure. Like that's that's one thing I've actually realized. That's actually one thing I like I came to realize this bull run that like Solana is just fine. For, like Solana is fine for the adoption it has. It's not running any companies like critical infrastructure. It's not running like any hospital software or anything. It's not running anything critical. It's basically a platform <clears throat> for a, <clears throat> sorry. It's basically a trading platform for like day gen gamblers. And so it going down every once in a while is not really all that severe. Because there's like, there's no one's life hinging on. I guess if you like, I suppose if you collateralize your entire life savings on like a dog or cat coin, I suppose it could be critical to you. But unless you did that, it's probably not critical to you. <clears throat> hmm. You can't really you can't really fix the arbitrage bots. You just need to make the arbitrage bots like not profitable. To all the bloody link marines, they all went away cuz link hasn't really moved all that much in price for a couple of years now. I mean, Link's big rise was back in 2018, and then all the Link Marines came online. But, like, in the last bull run, it kind of disappointed. It hasn't really done anything this bull run. I 
I mean, Solana's really been kind of like crappy for a couple of hours. Like I said, they just, they really just need to do something. They really just need to do something about the arbitrage bots. And the easiest way to fix it is just the fees. Just make it unprofitable. Just make the arbitrage bots unprofitable. And uh, stop trying to make it where you can brag about your transa your transaction numbers and like kill the arbitrage bots because they can't do both at the same time. You think the reason for Ethereum, ADA, AVAX, IOTA, Polkadot are successful because of you? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, I, I look, Ethereum, look, Ethereum's only successful because it was the first one. And also, IOTA's really not that successful because IOTA's kind of like dropped like a rock. Like right now, Solana's being more successful than all of them. I mean, yet you haven't fled to another chain, case in point. I mean, the other chains don't have the liquidity. And outside of the time that Solana's actually kind of bogged down, it actually works really well. I feel like Solana's also gained enough liquidity that like people don't really want to move to other chains. I, and also like you don't we don't really know how Cardano will perform if it had as many transactions as Solana. And uh, Cardano is just not really doing too much to bring attention to itself. I bet like if Cardano actually got more um, like volume and more trading power like and more trading clout. Like Grayscale would add it back into their fund. We have to repeat because there are new people here every day. Yeah, and also like even within the same stream, people ask the same questions over and over again. Because like everyone wants, everyone wants to know what's your prediction for this? What's your prediction for that? Because people are obsessed with like predictions from YouTubers. And this is why people get so upset when YouTubers are wrong because they think like, they think like if a YouTuber says something, it must be true, even though we're just guessing like everyone else. Uh, this year, are they, are they a top 20? Are they a top 20 project? Probably not because like, I mean, Casper has smart contracts, but so does everyone else. Uh, there's a lot of other projects with like pretty good liquidity pools and like the infrastructure set up. Casper doesn't really have any of that infrastructure right now. Like if they can set all of it up and attract people, maybe they'd be top 20. My prediction for wormhole, uh, I don't really have a specific prediction for wormhole. I predict it's going to act exactly like Jupiter in the next two months. Like I, I, I expect that wormhole will act exactly in the last next two months, just how Jupiter has acted in the last two months. It's going to dump for a couple of weeks and then start coming up and then it's going to shoot up to maybe two or three times its debut price. That's my guess. Why they assume YouTubers know anything better? Because like people in crypto, even though like, here's a, here, here's a secret that I've been telling people. Even though crypto people like think they're decentralized and think that they like, they want to give a finger to the man, they are all craving for some guru figure to come and lead them. They don't actually want to be decentralized. They want to be centralized. Did you hear about the states reaching out to IOHK? For, yes, I have heard rumors about that, but I don't really know how true that is. Yeah, I actually have some world. I actually have World Mobile myself. Like, I only have a hundred World Mobile tokens, but I do hope that's true. I have my doubts, though. Unless something really solid comes out, I don't really listen to rumors. What's this about stable coins ban? I didn't know there was a stable coin ban. It lifted in Japan. I didn't know there was one in Japan. I'm not really, see like, I'm not that familiar with the Japanese and Korean markets because the Japanese and Korean markets are kind of separate from anything else. Like, unless you're a Japanese or a Korean citizen, I don't think you can really, I don't think you can actually use the Japanese and Korean markets. That's why like sometimes there's a price discrepancy between them and uh, the rest of the markets.
So what do you like, Soul Chain? Like, destruction, actually, you need to realize that, like, in the U.S., there's more Democrat-leaning people than Republican-leaning people. And that ratio is actually getting worse for them. Because, like, a, a lot of their social policies, GOP social policies, just really aren't that popular. Japan, Sony looking to make an NFT bank, while Jasmine and A-Star looking to integrate digital services, according to Jasmine CEO. Well, I don't know if I would really trust the Jasmine CEO. I want that to be true, though. Oh, I really want that to be true. I want Jasmine to 10x or more. Told me to sell a physical uh, Cassis 1 BTC 10 years ago. Yeah, because every couple of years, the U.S. population goes up. If you look at the percent, the voting participation as a proportion of the population, it was pretty much average. Essentially, the anti-Trump vote beat the Trump vote. I mean, if Jasmine were to hit a dollar, that would be great. I, I'd be thrilled if Jasmine hit 30 cents. Yes, because like, well, look, when you're, when you're hyper polarized, turnout does tend to go up, but compared to like, but compared to participation when Obama first got elected, it was still like lower than when Obama first got elected in terms of voter participation. It was well with, it was well within the range of like the proportion of people that actually voted 2016 and tw like 2016 was just a really depressed vote because no one wanted Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. Yeah, I mean, but Destruction X, what's what's your point? Obviously, like, cities are going to vote Democrat. They've always voted Democrat. Yeah, but, like, like so a lot of the, a lot of the American population is urban. It's not, it's not really the silent majority, because, like, cities and suburbs actually have the majority of the population. The Trump vote's not a silent majority. It's actually a really loud minority. Is interesting, but kind of... I don't... Actually, I wouldn't mind at all if RFK became president. I mean, I can deal with his conspiracy theories. He's actually pretty crypto-friendly. Wait, Big E32, why wouldn't you vote for RFK or Trump if you're like a one-issue voter? If, you're, if your only issue is crypto, why wouldn't you vote for RFK? Or maybe even Trump, because he might be better than Biden on crypto. I mean, I'm not a one-issue voter, so I'm not voting like that, but still. Buying junior minor stocks? No, I'm not. I, I'm not I, I don't really care about junior minor stocks. I don't, I'm not buying any mining stocks. If I were to buy any crypto stocks, they'd be either, coin, they, they'd be either Coinbase or like MicroStrategy. They really don't, though, Destruction X. Like the... The amount, like the proportion of voters that vote in elections has been really consistent throughout the years. Like G the GOP is just making, the GOP is trying to do everything besides change their policies into things that people like. You have no idea how, like, you have no idea how many votes your like anti-abortion thing is costing you. Mining stocks are worse than meme coins. They're not really worse than meme coins. I mean... Mining stocks always have, like right now, mining stocks have that halving risk. Mining stocks have always had that halving risk. So like right now they are kind of risky, but I think Marathon and Riot is going to pull out just fine. Yes, I, look, I, I think if it, was, if it wasn't COVID, like Biden would have won that election. Like, Trump, I mean, like, the, the COVID thing lost Trump a lot of votes. I actually don't think, like, I, I don't think voting fraud has, has any real, any effect on any of our elections. Wait, I, no, like, buying miners is dumb right now. Like, buying miners yourself is dumb. You don't have the capacity, like, most people do not have the capacity to mine from their private residence.
It has Kane more recently from the Thames shooting themselves in the foot. I mean, it obviously like the 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 thing in the middle, the stuff in the Middle East is uh has made the GOP gain some because like both like uh, like both uh both of those contingents generally vote Democrat, and you're gonna ex- and you're gonna upset one or the other. You're either gonna upset either the Jewish vote or the Muslim vote, and both of those are usually Democrats. So the stuff in the Middle East is like bad for the Democrats, obviously. Uh, Jasmine CEO, have any have any receipts from Sony? I haven't seen it. But you know, like if they can manufacture enough hype, I, I personally think the people from Jasmine just are gonna pump the coin, are gonna pump coins, because like they've tried to reinsure the invest, they've actually tried to reinsure the investors that the coin that the, it's the situation is okay. Dude, like the GOP hasn't won a popular vote since Bush's second term. I I don't think like like the GOP hasn't won a popular vote since like Bush's second term. And like the the COVID thing made Trump just less popular. Right now, uh, ING is mining 60% of BTC. Look, I'm not really bu- I'm not interested in buying crypto mining stocks. How am I, uh, are you liking the tin? I, I wonder, like, there are still some Litecoin fans out there. I don't understand why anyone would be a Litecoin fan at this time. I guess some people still hold hope for Litecoin. I am not one of them. I thought Jasmine was partner with Panasonic. I mean... Jasmine has some connection to the industry. Look, Jasmine is an actual company with like an actual physical location and with actual products. They're an IoT company. But I don't even know how their crypto really plays into any of this stuff. They keep on saying that their crypto is going to be used for something or other, but I'm not really sure what. Like crypto is going to be used for something or other, but I'm not really sure what. Nah, I'm think I think an uh, uh, LTC is done. Can you consider putting some crypto profits in stocks or gold, silver? Well, no, like Milton Bates, Jasmine can't actually, like Milton Bates, Jasmine um, can't actually uh, finance their company with the coins. They don't have many of them left. They literally, like Jasmine literally dumped their entire supply within the first couple of months or in the first year. So they don't really have much left. So like, unlike XRP, they can't just, they can't just dump more and more every month. Like, unlike that, like, they can't, they just can't dump more and more every month. Because, like, if you look at the supply of XRP versus, like, the total, like, versus the total supply, there's still a lot that the XR, that Ripple can dump. Jasmine doesn't have that. So like they don't actually have the issue. They don't, like they're, like uh, the company dumping isn't going to be a huge issue for Jasmine. They've already dumped the entire supply. The thing is like I think their investors are really pissed off, and I think they're afraid of lawsuits right now. So they're probably going to attempt to do something with the coin or pump the price of the coin or something. So like I'm just waiting for them to pump the price of the coin even more. Because at the top of the bull run, if they start pumping the coin, I do believe they can get it up to like 30, 40 cents. I definitely believe they can get it up to 30, 40 cents. I don't know if they're like, I don't think they can get to a dollar. I think like it's too far gone for it to actually get to a dollar. But 30, 40 cents, I definitely think is possible. 88 to another coin. No, I'm not. I don't care about Grayscale's actions, man.
like I really don't care about Grayscale's actions. Like it, it's just like I'm not I just I don't really like I'm like if I had Adam, I wouldn't sell my Adam either. I can't take Jasmine seriously. They don't even have their own chain. I mean, a lot of people debut projects on Ethereum or other chains. That doesn't really bother me. I I think like because they had a couple of investor conferences and they reassured their investors, I feel like they're just going to I feel like they are going to try to do something with it and they're going to pump the coin. And that's why I'm keeping my Jasmine for right now and not selling it. Cuz like this isn't like it's not like an anon coin. It's a, it's an actual company with a physical location. So like if they get sued, like people know who to sue and where to sue. And I think there's a lot of pissed off investors about it. So if they actually end up pumping the coin back up to like 50, 40 50 cents, I'm it's gold for me. And I'm willing to make that bet. Do I think like I will hold it like if they pump it to 50 cents would I sell? Obviously, I would sell all of it pretty much immediately. Yeah, but you know, like meme coins usually don't hold investor conferences. Like they don't try to, re meme coins generally don't try to reinsure their investors. Pump it with whose money? I think, the I think the company has some money to actually pump it. And they are, tr they are trying to work partnerships to like build up hype. I, I feel like it's not that hard for them to actually start some kind of a bull run with Jasmine during like an actual bull run. Remember, like, this is like, this is not, we're not talking about an Anon project whose developers can just disappear on a whim. It's, it's not, like, it, that's not what Jasmine is. Because, like, we actually know who, we actually know who all their CEOs and CTOs are. They're an actual company with a history. They're, they do IoT, and we even, we even know their physical location where their office is. Uh, Jai, March 8th is already come and gone. It, it came and gone like a month ago, maybe next year, but, uh, yeah, March 8th is gone, man. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it to pump and dump massively again so I can just pump it. Now, the, the only thing I buy at McDonald's is the value menu. He, so he's going to try to like bank on the whole eclipse thing. I don't know, man. I I really don't know. Elon Musk wants to do a lot of things. I'm all, like Elon Musk wants to do a lot of things. He does some of them, he doesn't do some of them. He's essentially just using uh, crypto to troll things. I think like just because he's used crypto to troll things, like everyone in crypto actually pays attention to what he does with his other companies. So his mission has already been achieved. Like he's basically like assumed cult status within the crypto community. So crypto people will pay attention to whatever the hell he does, even though if it has nothing to do with crypto, which I find really bizarre and odd. So this Jasmine lockup came and went with no fanfare. Looks like not. I mean, with the Jasmine stuff, I don't really know what to believe and not believe. I'll try to look at it, but I'm not really sure what to believe and not believe. If you if you actually look at like the um, circulating supply and the total and the and the actual supply of Jasmine, almost all of it's out in the almost all of it's out in the open. The company doesn't have like a huge escrow. Yeah, it should be around April. It should actually be around April nineteenth or April twentieth. I mean, Jasmine, like Jasmine's website is just like information on where their corporate office is and who their like uh, and who their um, CEOs are. I'm perfectly fine with that. I I don't even know like after investing in it for this long, I have no idea what the hell it does. I just know it's IoT, but that doesn't really narrow it down all that much. Just saying that their IoT does not narrow it down at all for me think some of the holder coins will be around yes i don't think the qfs thing has any i don't think the qfs thing will actually affect anything it's just a buzzword that people uh that, that people just try to 
get around on DeFi booms. Yeah, so DeFi is getting more and more wallets into the system. There is that European regulation thing that could really hamper it, though. Can't they hire better web designers? Honestly, I don't really care about a fancy website. Like, just a, a normal static website is perfectly fine. Like, all I want, like, for crypto companies, I just want a website that gives me easy information. I don't actually want, like, animations or anything like that. That's all, like, BS. Yeah, I also wouldn't spend 10K on a website. I don't, like, they don't really sell anything through their website. Like, it, the website does not need to be fancy for crypto companies. I mean, essentially, the website is just a, there's nothing, there's actually nothing wrong with this website. There's actually nothing wrong with this website. It looks like a lot of other corporate websites. It basically tells you, like, it basically tells you who the president is, where to find them, and what their management structure is. I think it's perfectly fine. Like, essentially, it, it's, I mean, like, they could do without the this thing. But, I mean, like, they basically tell you, like, the information about the corporation, where they are on the map, and, like, who runs the company. I think that's perfectly fine, actually. Like, when I'm looking at, like, when I'm looking at, when I look for a, a corporate website, this is the information I want. I don't want some, like, fancy corporate website. I basically just want to, like, know, like, how to contact them, what their profile is, and what they do. And obviously, like, they don't, I don't think Jasmine manufactures products that, like, just common people use. It, I mean, the CEOs themselves might have actually designed it. That's true. They're mapping out their past to conquer? Maybe. This actually looks like a lot like the MCI thing I saw years back. But I mean, like, real, they, but, but for like a, you know, like, you know, what's, um, I mean, just the fact, look, just the fact that they actually tell you who they are and where their physical office location is, that's more professional than the vast majority of crypto projects. You can have the best website available, but if your team's anon and you just want to keep it that way, then you're not professional. I mean, you can go and check. They have a physical location. Well, I, I think like I think people have actually seen them. They're, they've had two. They've they've actually held two investor conferences. They're not only a crypto. They're all, they're they're not only a crypto. They're an actual company with investors. Like since they've listed a physical location, people have actually been to their office. I mean, I haven't, but people have actually been to their office. It looks like a regular office building in Tokyo. A breakdown of AST proposed Jasmine. I would still go with ADA at this point. I mean, despite like, I think ADA is closer to its ecosystem blossoming than VET is. I'm not really like, I might actually be doing a VET AMA soon, sooner or later. I think VChain's actually reached out to me to do an AMA. So I'm going to be asking about their, I'm going to be asking about their ecosystem. So actually, um, they actually replied to me on that. It could be, uh, Jasmine definitely could be looked at a meme at this point.
So I'm trying to like, we're trying to organize like, a, we're, we're definitely trying to organize like some kind of AMA. Dude, stop spamming pews. No, like if you, if you spam your like, if, if you're spamming all these like, uh, if you're spamming your crap coin, no one's going to buy it. Because like, we basically just think your coin is going to be a scam if you keep spamming it. Like some idiots actually think it helps their coin to spam it in a chat channel. Like what the hell, man? Uh, Costco hot dog pizza. I, I think, I mean, I think that meme has actually the potential to go up. That's why I haven't sold it yet. Dude, if you and a bunch of morons come in here and start spamming your garbage coin, it's going to be automatically referred to as garbage. What are your thoughts on Axelar? People have asked me, I think people have mentioned that coin a couple times before. Dude, people, when people spam coins like that, they're obviously close to being rugged. So if you ever see like spam like that on a channel, you shouldn't buy that coin. Cross, secure cross-chain communication for Web3. There's actually several of these projects now. Like Wormhole is kind of like, Wormhole is trying to be like a huge cross-chain communication. I, you know, Ton is just Telegram. Ton is just Telegram coin. I haven't heard of that many meme coins on Ton. Uh, have you heard Shiba Inu's creator, Shaitoshi, is following and bought a bag, a bought a microcap called Kindu? Yeah, I don't really know if I if I if I'd be following like stuff that uh Sh like uh Sh Shitoshi does. I might buy some Kendu just for the hell of it. Just in case he pumps it, but I wouldn't actually be buying a huge amount of it. Like I don't think people should be buying coins just because the other guy did too. What's my opinion on GHX? I don't really know what GHX is. If you're going to ask my opinion on random coins, I'm not really going to know because most of these I haven't seen. Twenty four hours of the dev is docs and he is a TikTok crypto guy. Yeah, I, uh, I don't really care about your meme coin. Especially since a bunch of people just came in here and spammed it. Any meme coin that gets spammed on here is automatically garbage. Which crypto I buy now for investments? And it's not like TikTok crypto guys are especially trustworthy. Ape? Is that the Bored Apes thing? I've never really had 
I've actually never been a fan of the board, board apes thing. I've always thought board apes was like a useless kind of fad thing. Like I, I think it'll go up a little bit during the bull run, but I don't think the NFT craze is going to be quite as high this bull run. Yeah, it was uh, the guy that made $8 million from $100. That, that guy bought like cat key, but he bought it when the crypto had a market cap of like $2,500 or something. Like you'd have to get like extremely lucky for that. Yeah, Chainlink's not like a sleeper. Everyone already knows about Chainlink and I'm actually pretty bullish on Chainlink. They just, it just hasn't made too many movements in the last couple of months. Yeah, I mean, like, look, I, I wouldn't go buy that coin right now, obviously. Like the time to make money off that coin has come and gone. And plus, if you're just buy, if you're buying cat key right now, you're basically just being you're just basically acting as exit liquidity. The guy has like ten percent of the like the guy has an entire ten percent of the coin, man. He's already made his money, and he's just wanting to exit more. Render of for gaming, sell your graphics cards performance to the public. I can see that be I actually can see that being pretty big. I mean, like borrowing like graphics cards power, I think a lot of these things are like steady at home or folding back in the day, except you're sharing GPU power instead of CPU power. What about Pepe and Bonk? I think Pepe and Bonk are already big enough where like huge ROIs from them aren't really possible. Like the, the the big the big meme coins like they've kind of already had their day. Yes, they'll st they'll probably they can probably still go up, but you won't get like the hundred x from them that they've already gotten. Sure, there'll be a lot of meme coin rugs, but a lot of like a lot of non meme projects will also rug. I, I still think like, look, memes were by far the best performing uh, narrative in, in like the, within the, in the last quarter. And I still think they're going to be the, the most profitable narrative the next quarter as well. <laughs> A strange token in my trust wallet. Uh, so now it's a, it's a, I'm pretty sure that's a honeypot and I wouldn't touch that. It's like the Evers coin thing in my atomic wallet. Would not touch that at all. Here's the Some grandma on an African village made six figures buying random meme coins. I'm sure it's happened. Definitely sure it's happened. I think you guys are making the mistake that a crypto project has to have a fancy website to actually like, also like Jasmine isn't like, Jasmine isn't a crypto, isn't like a, an actual crypto project. It's an actual company. Like all, like all the, all the website is, is telling you who runs the company and where the company's located. I think most crypto projects do have a website though. 
Like most crypto projects definitely have a website. Yeah, see, it just needs to be a little, need a lot of cleaning up. Yeah, they do need to get rid of the unnecessary images. I don't mind it just having like the info that like their contact info or who runs the company. What are the bad news of the day besides Soul choking and Cardano removing from Grayscale? Not very, there's not very much. I mean, like we know that DeFi is exploding and BlackRock has actually uh, uh, added five more companies to the ETF list. I mean, like a website where you just tell like where you just like tell who the uh, companies who runs the company and where their physical location is in the city. That doesn't really scream rug pull. Like the, the, the websites that scream rug pull are the ones that try to hide their identity. And try to convince you that being anon is good. Watch there be a solar eclipse and token release this Monday. Look, you want to sell Jasmine in this bull run for sure. I still think it has a lot of room to pump though, releasing on Flare during the solar eclipse. That does not surprise me. Oh, I don't really mind memes being, I, I don't really mind memes being Anon because like I know they're pumping dumps. Like that's what memes are supposed to be. But if you're like a non, if you're actually a non meme coin with a legitimate business, then yeah, you can't be a non. If you're actually trying to do something. I mean, like when I'm look, if I buy if if I buy like a coin like Sonic Obama Inu, I actually don't care who the team is. I just care if the number goes up or not. But like if I invest in something like XRP, I do want to know who the team is. Or like if I want to invest in something like Cardano, I do know I do want to know what the team is. If you look at the community on X, Hitty and XRP are super bearish, it's because they haven't pumped yet. Everyone that actually owns memes knows they're mostly trash and will pump and dump the best. Of course. Like, look, people that complain they lost money on a meme coin are just mad that they didn't, like, they didn't dump before it all fell apart. They know exactly what they're buying. They know they're buying on a gamble. They just want to, they just want to blame someone else if it doesn't go well. That's really, really obvious. That's, like, super obvious what they're trying to do. It's not that much of a surprise. Really not that much of a surprise at all. Jasmine, I was... No, people have actually been to their investor conference. It's more than just one person. It's, actual, it's an actual company. And the company actually existed before the coin. The Jasmine company actually existed before the coin. They just made the coin for whatever reason, probably to raise money. And now they have a bunch of mad investors that they're trying to calm down because they don't want a lawsuit. That's my guess. Yeah, 
Yeah, people like also Jasmine not really meme coin, but like people like want to thumb their nose at like meme coins, but they're gonna end up being the most pro. They they are gonna end up being the most profitable niche this uh, this bull run. I can see it right now. Jasmine's been like an IoT technology. Like it's been an IoT technology company for quite a few years before they made the coin. So like the actual companies actually the, the companies actually existed for a long time. The coin came the coin came in later. My guess is the coin was probably just a money grab by them for the most part. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Bro, I've managed to accumulate like six hundred dollars in my phantom wallet, man. Like I actually might break the one K mark this month. Almost six hundred dollars in my phantom wallet. I mean, look, 95%, like 99% of meme coins are going to be crap anyways. So just the fact that I have Book of Meme and Costco Hot Dog, I'm fine with that. If, if people want to donate me more Costco Hot Dog, feel free to. I mean, the rest of them are uh, not going anywhere. Just on crypto gains or as gifts. I mean, they're gifts, but they've gone up since people donated them to me. The, I mean, like the ones I've invest, like the, the two chains I'm in are like VChain and Cardano. Um, I, I also have some like Chainlink. I also have some like Polygon. A couple of things like that. Now, nah, dude, people just want me to admit, people just send me meme coins in the hopes that I'll actually mention them on stream. And sometimes they end up being worth a lot. Yes, you were. Yeah. Hmm. Thoughts on Ando Finance? I think Ando might be slightly overvalued here. I, I think they rode the BlackRock narrative like really, really hard. A lot of the people, like a lot of the people that were so sure that X projects were going to go to zero during the bear market, those projects didn't actually go to zero. And I'm almost sure that a YouTuber did not actually go to VeChain's headquarters. Put eight bucks on every ERC twenty meme coin. No, it would cost you more than eight dollars to buy the ERC twenty meme coin. I think a lot of the utility, like the people that are like trying to, I think a lot of the people that are just trying to invest on utility are upset because the utility driven coins actually haven't done well at all, or like the industrial utility coins have kind of been crap for like ever essentially. It's like you know the meme coins. If you don't catch it at the right time, if you don't take the time, if you don't actually catch it at the right time and you don't cash out at the right time, you might lose, you might not get the gains. But with a lot of this industrial utility coins, you never even had the chance to get any gains. Dude, he probably didn't actually go visit VeChain. He probably just visited an empty office building in his neighborhood or something. you were to pick one coin to hold until the top of the bull run? (laughs) 
I don't know. I mean, I might pick something like near. Like I think so. Like like near Solana would actually be safer choices. B and B also might be a pretty safe choice. But a lot of people have actually met these uh, these crypto leaders at like a lot of people have actually met these crypto leaders at like crypto conferences. How do you buy with? You can't buy ERC-20 with TRX. ERC-20 is only on Ethereum. DEX coins are guaranteed during bull, right? Not guaranteed, but they have a pretty good chance of pumping during the bull. Look, I'd, I still think like a lot of people are wondering why their industrial utility coins just haven't really done anything while like other coins are moving up. It's because industrial utility isn't really going to move coins up. Yeah, TRX trading pairs have nothing to do with ERC. You can't trade ERC with TRX. They're two entirely different chains. Unless you bridge them, but then you still have to pay the bridging fees, which I'm not really interested in doing. I mean, like the, the whole like look the, the whole like I like the whole like IS, uh, ISO two two zero zero two two like uh, narrative was like way worse than the meme narrative. Because if you listen to that narrative, you never got anything. You didn't even have a chance to actually cash out for profit. At least if you listen to the meme narrative, you actually had a chance to cash out for profit. But if you follow that ISO narrative, like you had like zero chance for profit. Like the partnerships, like the partnerships thing, that was like, that was useful like six, seven years ago. Partnerships are rarely useful now for pumping the price of a coin. isn't in effect now until it's it they're slow like companies are slowly adopting it i don't think it's supposed to be fully adopted in europe or something until 2025 but guess what that's also not going to change that's not going to change the fate of all those so-called iso coins anyways Yeah, Coinbase actually expanded into Canada. That's like one of the big news for yesterday. Coinbase stock actually looks better than it has. I think Coinbase stock is like one of the most attractive like non-crypto investments in crypto. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Hit that bell notifications button. I will be back tomorrow and I will be back later tonight and I'll see.